We were latchkey kids, left to roam feral in the lingering shadows of the Cold War under the constant threat of nuclear annihilation. We grew up with a sense of self-reliance, navigating the uncertainties of our time as we yearned for something more profound than the fleeting fun offered by 80s decadence. We were the Reaganomics, the Sesame Street and MTV generation. And all of our heroes had turned out to be marketing schemes. Despite the best efforts of Mr. Fred Rogers, It's such a good feeling. We were all starting to develop a profound sense of unease. As the enthusiastic 80s slowly gave way to the brooding 90s, our world became one of quirky zines, depressing spoken word poetry. Woman. Half grumbled sentences and fighting the power. They called us slackers for rejecting excess. But as our youthful angst echoed through the airwaves and we were being extreme, extreme. it dawned on us that our quiet rebellion was, like everything else, just being marketed to us. So we brooded some more and then we vanished. I walk a lonely road. But from our self-exiles, from that sea of brooding, came a beast. From the dark ashes of the 90s, one band, nay, one song, rose like a phoenix and brought light back to a desolate musical landscape. The 90s had some fantastic music. From the raw power of bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains, to the revolutionary sounds of Public Enemy and Cypress Hill, our music was undeniably captivating and socially conscious. It could, however, especially grunge, be a bit nihilistic. It was that introspective friend at the party who always wore black and mumbled poetry in the corner. It was intriguing thought-provoking, and undoubtedly important. But after a while, you just wanted to dance, you know? I want to dance. You can only be too angsty to care for so long, dude. Let's face it, even the grungiest among us needed a break. Enter Hanson, a group of fresh-faced young men who pranced onto the scene like deer, frolicking amidst the ashes of grunge and hardcore rap with their smooth harmonies, infectious melodies, and flowing golden locks. They were the antithesis of grunge. It was the musical equivalent of those cheesy live, laugh, love signs we all have in our hallways now. And as serious and brooding as we all were, we needed that ridiculous reminder. Their youthful exuberance lifted our spirits and filled our hearts with a kind of hope that we thought we had forgotten. It was a special kind of good feeling that we had all lost touch with. Grunge and rap spoke to the struggles we faced and the world we lived in, and that was vital. But eventually, we needed a break from all that darkness. And Mbop was the burst of sunshine we yearned for, a reminder to cherish fleeting moments. It was the day 90s music stopped taking itself so seriously. It's also the day we realized, my God, we're getting old. How old are these guys? Like 10? How do they know it goes so fast? How did they get so wise? And also, what does Chili Dog have to do with it? Chili Dog! Are they saying Chili Dog there? Is that Chili Dog? Chili Dog! Chili Dog! Mbop heralded us to the new age and to the long summer days of rollerblading and frosted tips that would become our immediate futures. <laughs> so, my friends, let's raise a toast to the 90s, to grunge's raw power, to early rap's righteous message, and to the sweet, angry energy of youth. But we're all old enough now to know which song of the 90s really held the truth out to us like a shining diamond. We were just too angst-ridden at the time to see it. Remember those glory days. 
but then come right back here to the present and have a look around. Things aren't so bad. Enjoy them while you can, because you know what they say. In an mbop, it's gone. And also, chili dog. Please hit like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.